Yeah. Welcome to all right. Welcome to the Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. Uh, Cal had an idea of doing Lightning Talks before the regular Nomad US uh, talks, so here we are. Uh, we've got two talks for you tonight. Uh, the first one is going to be by James Tickum. Uh, what can Rabbit MQ do for you? Um, if you would like to speak, or if you would like to do a Lightning Talk, and me an email. My name is Joe Ferguson. Uh, you can reach me at joe at nomadphp.com. And I'm going to turn it over to James. Hi there. Can everyone hear me? I guess so. Uh, yes. Yeah. Cool. Brilliant. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Um, so I'm going to tell you uh, a quick bit about me. I guess most of you probably not heard of me before. Um, I'm from the UK. Uh, a little place called Portsmouth on the south coast. Uh, I'm a Zen certified engineer. I've been doing PHP for about 11 years now. Uh, I'm a Zen Framework 2 developer at a company called protected.co.uk and I also run the PHP Hampshire user group. Um, you can find me on Twitter um, at Asgrim. So, um, onto the talk. What is message queuing? Um, well, Message queuing, uh, well, RabbitMQ is a message broker, and what that means is it is you can pass messages between applications. And one of the things I really like about RabbitMQ is it allows you to fire and forget messages. So what that means is you give it a message, it puts it in a queue, and then something else deals with that message later on. And it means you don't have to deal with the consequences straight away. Uh, the fancy term for it is message-oriented middleware. And that basically means to me that you can asynchrony, a asynchronously process data, but you can get a synchronous acknowledgement that that data will be processed in the future. So I mentioned it allows you to separate applications. Another great thing about RabbitMQ is that it can speak almost any language uh, Obviously, you can do it in PHP. Uh, you can use it in C Sharp, uh, Java, Node, Ruby, Perl, Python. Basically, anything that talks this protocol called AMQP, which stands for Advanced Message Queue Protocol, which also recently became an ISO standard. So, AMQP is also an open protocol, which means it's not closed, obviously, um, and that can only be a good thing, I think. And it also means that it's not just RabbitMQ that talks that language. And that allows you to separate out parts of your application. So say you have a Java application which is better at processing some data than a PHP application, then you can switch out and use a separate application. It also does what I call low-cost parallelization. I think I might have made up that word, but uh, I'll go with it anyway. And what I mean by that is that the other application can do background processing while your front-end application, for example, your website, carries on working. And you, don't, you only have to wait for your message to be queued, not necessarily processed. And we'll go into a bit more about what I mean in a moment. So let's have a look at a basic example of how, how this message queuing actually works. On the left side, we're starting with something called a publisher. And what that means is it just generates messages to be processed. It publishes the messages. So it generates the messages, or data, if you like, that need to be dealt with asynchronously. And it sends it to this, to this thing called a queue. And the actual content of the message or data can be in any format you like, pretty much. It could be a binary payload. It could be XML. Uh, I like to use JSON, personally. Um, I, th I find it's quite uh, uh, interchangeable, if you like. And sending the data to the queue is a pretty fast action. Um, RabbitMQ is built in a language called Erlang. If you've not heard of it, it's kind of designed to be really quick. And once the message has been queued, the publisher can continue execution. And then later on, the consumer can pick up the message from the queue and then actually deal with that data. 
So RabbitMQ also has this thing called exchanges. Now this is where RabbitMQ really starts to get a bit more powerful. The publisher generates the messages. It sends it to something called an exchange. Now exchange is a bit like FedEx, but maybe more reliable. Um, and it's, it's like a, a postal system. So the exchange routes your message to the appropriate queue. And each queue can get processed by consumers. And as I've shown in this diagram, um, you can have as many publishers as you want, and the messages just keep getting queued. And you can have as many cons consumers as you want for each queue. And that allows you to scale separately the parts of your application. So for example, if your consumers can't keep up with the number of messages in the queue, you can just add more. And if they're not doing very much, you can remove some. And obviously that might cost less if you're in a business crit critical environment. That type of exchange is called a fan out. And there are other types. For example, here we've got direct exchange. Um, uh, the fan out one, which we looked at in the last slide, it distributes messages evenly to all the attached queues. With direct, it gets a little bit more clever and it allows you to put something called a routing key, which is essentially like your, your mailing address or postal address that the exchange examines and sends to the appropriate queue. So you can see in this diagram, I've got a fruit routing key, routing key on a message will go into the fruit queue and get processed by the fruit consumers. And we've got a routing key for a vegetable, which goes to the vegetable queue and gets processed by the vegetable consumer. There's also another type of exchange, which I'd like to quickly look at. And that's called a topic exchange. This gets a little bit more powerful again. And as you might have guessed already, um, the topic exchanges allow you to separate out uh, parts of the address, or routing key. So for example, green.fruit in this example would go into the star.fruit queue and the green dot and the green dot star queue because it satisfies both addresses. In the green dot vegetable one, it will only go to the star dot vegetable queue and the green dot star queue. And similarly, if you had red dot vegetable, it would only go into the star dot vegetable queue because it doesn't match any of the other queues. So these are a few of the real world uses that I'm actually using, or our company rather is using um, in our applications. We use it for a fast logging solution. We want a logging solution that we didn't have to wait for the database to store messages or send it to a third party logging solution. So instead our application sends our log messages to RabbitMQ and then we send them on afterwards. We also use it for sending emails because that can be a bit of a slow process connecting to a server, sending the email. And we also use it for sending SMS messages. Uh, we also use it for background processing. So we do quite a lot of anal analyzing data, reporting on it. So we can do that in the background instead of making the user wait for a page to load, which means you can put up a nice loading screen essentially. So how do we use it in PHP? Um, well, there's this handy library uh, by a guy called Alvaro Videla, and uh, the same guy has also written a book called RabbitMQ in Action, which is well worth checking out. So this library is available on Packagist as well, which means you can use it in your composer.json. So you just add it in with a require, it's very straightforward. And then we'll have a look at a quick code example. Um, it's quite straightforward. You, it uses namespaces, so as you'd expect, you create a new connection. Uh, you give it your host port, username, password, um, and you create this thing called a channel in the library. Um, and then you declare the queue that you want to connect to and the exchange you want to connect to. And that sets up the connection. There's a few parameters for the queue. Um, for example, uh, the durable option, which means whether the queue will survive server restarts or not. Obviously, if you don't set durable and the server dies, you would lose everything in that queue. Um, and also auto delete, uh, which means uh, when, the, uh, when the channel is closed, it could 
potentially delete the, the queue if you wanted it to. And uh, the exchanges also share the same sort of options. So this is a, a really basic example of uh, publishing. What we've got here is uh, we're using the channel we set up in the last example. And you just give it a string, and I'm passing it to uh, uh, an AMQP message object and passing that to the basic underscore public method, uh, publish, sorry, method. And that's as simple as it is to send a message. The uh, PHP AMQP lib does all the hard work for you. And similarly, consuming a message, or processing it if you like, is pretty much just as simple. You use the basic consume function. You give it the queue name that you want to consume. Uh, there's a couple of other parameters which I won't go into at the moment. And then you give it a callback. Uh, in this case, I've used a closure, um, just for simplicity. And the closure gets given an AMQP message object uh, with the payload in it. And then you can process that in whichever way you like, for example, JSON, XML, or something binary, for example. So, does anyone have any questions? Uh, I can't see any in the channel. Um, does not appear to have any questions. Okay. Well, maybe I've explained everything really well. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, All right. If there's no more questions, then um, yeah, I'd love some feedback on, on joined in, uh, as mentioned earlier. So thank you very much for listening. All right, thanks a lot to James for doing a lightning talk. If you would like to do a lightning talk uh, at Nomad PHP, please send me an email. My name is Joe. You can reach me at joe at nomadphp.com. Uh, this is a new thing that we're testing out with uh, Nomad PHP. Uh, please give James some feedback and send me your talk ideas. Thanks a lot.